Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, and I am so excited to be here. My name is Kennedy. I'm the social media specialist here at SMP, and boy, do we have a good show for you today. But first, I want to say hello to some of you. So let's see who is on today. Oh, Wolf Guy said hello to Roger's head. Hello. <laughs> Roger said good morning, good morning. We've got Nana on, Beth Small, good morning. We've got Pamela Nestler on, good morning. Reem Bolton, good morning, everyone. Christina Cunningham, we've got, let's see, I saw Ginger Israel on and she was talking about the rain because we had a massive heat wave in San Diego and now it's raining. So, I guess it's good. We need we need rain. We obviously need rain. <laughs> but this heat, this heat is just, whew, it's getting to us. It's getting to us. But let's see, anybody else? Everybody's saying, hi, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, everyone. I'm so excited that you all are here today. We're going to have a really, really fun show. And your favorite host is back or your favorite guest is back. It is Calista from Wonderful. And she is here to continue our thread series that we started last Friday that will be going um, through the rest of the month or at least we're skipping SoFest because we've got SoFest next week. But after that, we're going to have two more weeks of education. That's my new favorite word, by the way. education. all here with Wonderful. It's going to be great and awesome. But before I get into that, I want to just quickly talk about SoFest. Like I said earlier, it is next week. It is coming so soon. Um, we are all busy finishing up the last little bits of it before we go live on Monday and start SoFest off strong. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be the 12th through the 16th. So all of next week, streaming eight hours a day, five days a week. And let me tell you, if you like Callista today or if you watched her last week, she's going to be on SoFest. So make sure you guys tune in for that and you can get even more through education from Callista and just her awesome brain of knowledge all about thread. So it's really great. But make sure you guys are tuning in for um, SoFest. It's going to be really awesome. And also, oh, Blaine, you want to say hi? <laughs> We've got Blaine in the house. Say good morning. Hey, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> it is Friday. We're all getting all set up. He's finishing up for SoFest, getting all ready and prepped. Um, but other than that, we're, we're doing great and we're excited and especially excited for today's show. So with that, I've just got a couple more announcements before we get into it. Make sure you guys are signed up for, um, oh, somebody just asked, how do we sign up for SoFest? You don't even have to sign up. So like you're watching today's show right now, just off of YouTube, that's what we're going to be. So you can watch us on YouTube or on Facebook um, starting at 8 a.m. So we're going to go live right at 8 a.m. You can go on and you can start watching all day long. So grab a cup of coffee, send the link to your friends and just hang out with us. We're going to have giveaways, giveaways galore. So you all know that we do, we do some fun giveaways every day, but the giveaways next week are going to be a different story. So I, I'll keep it at that. They'll let the surprise stay there, but definitely come on in and hang out with us for SoFest. It's going to be great and so much fun. I'm very excited. But with that, I just want to make a couple more announcements. Go back into it. <laughs> I just want to answer that question really quick. Um, make sure you guys are signing up for our emails. So if you are looking to get more connected with SMP and you just want a way to, you know, get more info or know all the happenings that's going on with SMP, definitely sign up for our emails because we do weekly emails where we talk about all the events going on, all of the special sales and savings. Like we've got a bunch of September savings going on right now. So definitely check that out. And also follow us on social media. We've got Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff up there. Twitter, TikTok. Oh my gosh. It's the list goes on and on, but definitely hang out with us on our social media because we always are posting the new happenings and all that kind of stuff. So just another great way to stay connected with us and be in the know of all things. Cause then you'll find out more about SoFest and all that stuff. And especially with SoFest voting is still open and it will end right before SoFest begins. So go to our website, click on the SoFest banner right on the front of the page and go vote. Go vote for all the favorite projects that you saw on there. You can vote twice a day. So go vote. 
share it with your friends. If you guys have any projects that you already submitted for SoFest, make sure you guys are sharing, sharing, sharing to all your friends and on Facebook and all that stuff. So that way you can just have all your friends go and vote. And that way you might win some awesome prizes. So we loved seeing all of the amazing projects. Me and Roger were looking like, oh my gosh, this one's nice. Oh, we like this one. Oh, I like this one. All of them are so gorgeous and beautiful. So definitely go check them out for yourself. Um, I saw a question up here. I just want to answer. Do, 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 do. No, I think we're okay. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yes, people are already going. I'm going to take notes. <laughs> Carol Lombardi is taking notes today. Um, a lot of people were taking notes last week, which is so awesome. And especially with Callista, she's so well-spoken with um, how she teaches and she just really helps you understand. And I mean, like the sausage theory, for example, you, you got to be able to remember these things. It's awesome. And so it's a great way to get everything all wrapped up in your brain and you got it locked and loaded. So with that, I will go ahead and get Callista on here and let's see if she is ready to start talking about some quilting threads. All right. Let's see. Oops. Is she there? How's it going? Let's see. Oops. There we go. Hi, Hi. Callista. How are you? Nice I'm good. <laughs> Thanks for having me on again. Of I course, just say, no, we are uh, happy so Friday excited. and hello, SMP Nation. Yes, happy, happy Friday. Friday. Happy Friday. It's the end of the week and some awesome yeah. education is coming your way. <laughs> exactly. We're capping off the week with more thread talks, you know? So yes. like Kennedy said, we're doing this like thread education series on Sewing Machine Plus. And this week we're covering quilting threads. So last week we talked about embroidery threads mm -hmm. and... Um, we kind of like did a really big deep dive into that. And like I said, I can't cover yes. all the things I want to say about thread in just an hour. So that's why we're having to do so many segments together. And exactly. So, but so. there's nothing wrong with that. It gives us more time to cover more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So this week, it's going to be quilting thread. So most of the things I'm going to be talking about this week are, are going to be new and specific to quilting, but there are going to be some things that I'm going to mention again, like I might give you guys a little bit of a refresh on thread weight because it's so important and so much about what I'm going to talk about. And maybe you guys missed what the sausage theory is. So I'll, I'll do See? a little like quick recap again this yes. week. Yes. So well, all right, Calista, off. I'm yeah. going to go ahead and let you go. Okay. So go ahead and get started. They're all, I'm looking at the chat. They're all excited. <laughs> and Carol Lombardi said, pen in hand, ready to learn. So awesome. I will go ahead and let you take it away. All right. We'll see you at the end. Thanks, Kennedy. Perfect. Okay, so just to start off again, if you guys weren't here last week, it's nice to meet you all. My name is Callista. I'm from Wonderfill. And if you guys haven't heard of Wonderfill before, we're a Canadian thread company. So we're based out of Calgary, Alberta. That's where I am right now, near the Rocky Mountains. And we specialize in thread. You can see behind me, we have all sorts of thread. We have everything from a hundred weight all the way to like a number three pearl cotton and all sorts of different types and kinds like rayon, poly metallic holographic thread glow in the dark reflective wash away iron fusible wool we really got it all so with all these different types of thread how do you know which ones to use and when and maybe some of them you've not even heard about before so I'm here to kind of talk to you guys about all the different types of thread and hopefully inspire you and get you to try something new or something that you haven't thought about before so last week we did embroidery threads and you can find that video on the SMP YouTube channel. And so there I, I kind of talked about how threads can really change the results of your work. And it's going to be the same this week. You can really see what role thread plays in your quilting. And I'm going to show you guys again some photos and we're going to be bouncing back and forth between just me and like a slideshow I prepared with a lot of different samples mm -hmm. and things like that that. And we also talked about, you know, some tips on how to use metallic thread and also why bobbins really matter. Again, this week, bobbins are going to matter for quilting. And I don't think people think about bobbin thread enough, but we're going to go into that a little bit. And so, yeah, so there's just like different displays of thread. I can see you guys talking about it here. But yeah, we have like deco bob, which is our 80 weight, the metallic threads and we have some cottons behind us as well but I'll get into it a little bit more 
So again, feel free to ask questions along the way. I'll try to answer them if I can catch them. Um, if not, I'll try to answer as many as I can at the end of the talk. And so with that, let's talk about today's topic. So before we get into that, we should talk about thread weight again, because it's such an important topic and it really helps you understand which threads to use when. And you can see here, we have the spectrum of the heaviest weight, which is at the very end, a number eight we have here, and the lightest is a hundred weight. So we actually have a number three as well, which is even heavier than the eight weight, but it's just not pictured. But you can see here, I kind of grouped them this time into like one, two, three, because I would generally like to say that the two category is what everyone's used to using. It's, it's kind of like a utility weight thread. 40 to 50 weight is kind of what everyone has used and is pretty comfortable using and what most machines especially the higher end ones, if they have like auto tensioning are usually like kind of made specifically like the default is for 40 or 50 weight thread. And then on the one group, you can see these are all heavier threads. So these are really going to make your stitches show. It's going to pop your designs out a lot more. And you want to use these threads when you want to see the thread. That is why they're heavier. Like you're using them because you want to see them. And just a note here is you can only use thread from 12 weight to 100 weight in your machine. So anything um, heavier than the 12 weight is actually not going to go through the eye of your needle. So just watch out for that. So the 12 weight is the heaviest you can use and, the, and it goes up to 100 weight that you can use as well. So, you know, it's kind of it kind of goes against um what you naturally think because it's the lower the number, the heavier it is, and the higher the number, the finer it is. So that's kind of how thread weight works. And so what's an easy way to remember thread weight? And so we talked a little bit about this last time, and I, and I think you guys really loved it, which is the Wonderfield sausage theory. So I see some comments going, I don't know what the sausage theory is. It's it's something that was invented here at Wonderfill. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So the sausage theory uh, relates to thread weight in the way that if you imagine um, having a barbecue, you know, there's still some time left in the season for barbecues, right? So you have a pound of meat and you have about 10 guests coming to your barbecue. So just picture how thick each sausage you can make for these 10 guests would be using that pound of meat. And now picture the same pound of meat, but suddenly word got out and now there's a hundred people coming to your barbecue, but you only still prepared that one pound of meat. So for everyone to get a sausage, you really have to stretch out um, that meat and like make them really, really thin so that each person can still get a hot dog or a sausage at the barbecue. So that's kind of how it works. So like the lower the number, the thicker those sausages can be, like the less guests you have. And the more guests you have with that same pound of meat, you got to make them thinner and smaller so everyone can get a bite. So that is the wonderful sausage theory on how to remember thread weight. So again, the lower the number, the heavier the thread. The higher the number, the lighter the thread. So again, this image is just to help you guys visualize what that kind of looks like and what threads that you'll generally find in our quilting or sewing industry. Um, they're usually around this range. And now you know how it works. Okay, so going into the next part is I really want to break up what, you know, quilting really is because there's general there's kind of two parts to it it's not just you know your quilt sandwich and quilting through that quilt sandwich but we also have to talk about the quilt top and piecing it together and what that entails and how you make quilt tops and all the different techniques that you use for making a quilt top before you even get into the quilting part so we're going to break that up into two different parts and then we're also going to talk about, you know, what threads you can use for quilting. You know, a lot of people tend to use about a 50 weight cotton for quilting. So what other threads can you use besides a 50 weight cotton thread? So we'll go into that a little bit more as well. 
And then again, playing with different weights in your quilting. So I want to show you this first example here. So you can you can already see this shell that's on the screen here. And that's a 50 weight Egyptian cotton thread. This is our thread called Tutti. It's a variegated Egyptian cotton thread. And so you can see this is like your typical weight of thread that you would use. And if you just do the same design, but switch the thread weight and you go to the next image and you really see your threads show. So Kennedy, if we can go to the next picture, there you go. That's the 12 weight. So if you just flip back and forth between these two screens, you can really see what a difference thread weight makes to your design. This is the same design, but all we did was change the thread. And you can really see the color of the thread shows up a lot more and your design shows up a lot more as well. And if you go to the next page, I think I have just like the side by side so you can see them next to each other. But this is just like a little bit of a taste of what we're gonna get into. But thread really does make a big difference. Like I said, just changing the weight of it is already completely different. So the first thing I want to talk about is kind of like what thread people generally use for quilting. So most of you out there, I'm sure, are using about a 50 weight cotton for your quilting. And that's kind of what you've used most of your quilting career, maybe. And so is it wrong to use that? Is it right to use that? Well, like I mentioned before, you can use almost any almost any type of thread for like most techniques, but it really depends on like what result you want to achieve and how you want it to look. So there's not really like a definite like right or wrong. It like if someone's like I like really thick seams and uses like a twelve weight to sew, it might be difficult. But if that's what they like, then you know more power to them. They can do that too. So. Using a 50 weight cotton is perfectly good for piecing and quilting, but there's definitely a lot more threads that you can use for quilting and piecing as well. So why do people generally like cotton thread for quilting? It feels like that most people generally like to stick with that. They don't really like to... Um, get into other types of thread because they think like the cotton should go with the cotton fabric and so it'll have um, a longer lifespan and they worry about how polyester might cut into their fabrics and maybe it won't last as long over time especially if you plan on passing on your quilts to future generations and you want it to stay in the family for many many years to come. So where does that sentiment come from? So for people have been quilting for a long, long time. And, you know, back when quilting started, there was really only natural fibers for people to use to quilt. So cotton is kind of like rooted in the history of quilting. And so a lot of people, um, as quilting is taught from generation to generation, kind of continue to say, oh, just, yeah, use quilting or use cotton for your quilting. And so, you know, that messaging kind of gets passed along. And then maybe around the 70s when polyester started to become really popular, um, you know, people still generally like to use cotton for quilting because that's what they were used to. And with polyester, there's really such a range between different types of polyester. There's some polys that are shiny and there's some polys that are matte. And which one do you use for what? And there's a lot of confusion around what good polyester is or what polyester you should be using in your quilts. And so I think that's made a lot of people kind of stay away from poly because it's such a large family of threads. And if you don't really know the difference between each one, you might not get good quality poly. And if you're not using a good quality polyester, um, they can be, some can be more stretchy. And in that instance, then it will affect, um, you know, your seams. And if you put it through a wash dry cycle, you might get some shrinking or stretching, or even if you're not sewing with it very well, and it's already elongated. And then after you're done, you see it kind of like you get the puckering and everything like that. And so that's why some people have stayed away from polyester. But you can absolutely use polyester for your quilting. It's all about knowing the different types and which ones to use for what and what the difference is. 
for polyester are. And someone made a really great comment, but yes, polyester has changed a lot over the years and it's not the same anymore. So that's why you don't have to just think about only sticking with cotton still for your quilting thread. So with cotton, just getting into it a little bit more, there's so many different types of language that we use around cotton thread. So maybe if we can see the next image, I think I have just a picture of cotton. So this is a picture of one of our 50 weight cottons. It's a double gassed uh, Egyptian cotton thread. And so let's talk a little bit about some of the terminology that you might encounter a lot with cotton. The first thing you'll, you'll see a lot is people mentioning long staple when they talk about um, cotton thread. So what does long staple really mean? So the way cotton thread is made is from a lot of um, Egyptian cotton or a lot of cotton fibers. And these little fibers or staples are twisted together to create your thread. And so why is it important to use a long staple Egyptian cotton? And why do you never see any company ever talk about using a short staple for their cotton? Well, having a longer staple, even if it's called long staple, the fibers are generally only really about an inch and a half to two inches long. And then you twist all those fibers together to create your strand of thread. So if you use a shorter staple, then the strands are going to be shorter and you're going to have a weaker thread because the way this thread has strength and stuff like that is from all the fibers twisting together and that the interlacing of the thread and gives it enough grip strength and also a good quality fiber itself gives the thread strength. But using a shorter staple, you're also going to get more lint on your thread. Because if you think about it, if I if you have someone with short hair and you try to twist their hair together, you're going to see a lot of different flyaways because all their strands of hair are very short. But if you twist longer hair together like mine, and you and you twist those strands together, you're going to get less less flyaways on on your thread. So if you think about a cotton thread and my hair being kind of something like that, the shorter my hair is or the more layers my hair is, I'm going to have more flyaways, which is kind of like your lint. And so that's why we want to use the longest staple that we can have to twist those threads together and make a stronger thread and also have less and try to start controlling the lint at that point already. So think about length equals strength. So that's going to be um, what that means for the long staple. And so the next thing is gassing. And I did touch on this a little bit last session is what does double gassing mean or what does gassing mean? So there's a lot of ways to treat lint on a cotton thread. So cotton thread is inherently linty and there's nothing you can do about it. That's just the nature and the characteristic of what a cotton thread has or is. And so there's different ways to deal with the lint because, you know, we all don't like linty machines and linty bobbin cases. So what can we do about the lint? So there's different ways to process it. And one of the more common ways in the industry to handle the lint is by putting like a very fine layer of glaze or wax almost on the thread so it holds all that lint down kind of like gelling your hair down a little bit so you don't get all those flyaways or like hairspray things like that but as the thread runs through on um through the sewing path or the thread path of your sewing machine some of that glaze or residue can scrape off inside your machine and you still get let, left with the lint problem at the end of the day once that comes off. So what we do is we try to remove as much lint as we can. So we do this by process of double gassing. So what that means is we actually take the thread and we run it through a tunnel that kind of has some heat or a bit of flame to it and it gently burns off that lint. So we can't remove it completely because we don't want to damage the integrity of the thread and, and its strength and things like that. So we burn it off very gently and we do this process and it burns off about 80% of the lint. And then we do this again. And that's why it's called double gassing because we do this gassing process twice. So we could like lightly burn off the lint two times and get as much off as we can. And, and at the end, you get left with a really soft and low lint cotton thread. 
So that's that's kind of what that means. So gassing and, and glazing and all that stuff usually is kind of related to like how we're trying to deal with the lint on linty threads and cotton being one of them. And so when you have a less linty thread as well, it's going to give you crisper stitches. All right. So the next thing that you see a lot is mercerization. So you see people say this is like a mercerized cotton and things like that. You'll see that in the description a lot for cotton threads. So um, just to answer quickly, are all Wonderfill cottons double gassed? Yes, all, all of our cottons are double gassed and they're all treated this way. You can um, you can just know that all of our threads at Wonderfill, we don't add anything that's like a top coat on the thread, like any glaze or wax or any adhesive things like that. We don't add any of that onto any of our thread. Um, so just to answer that question. And then so again, back into mercerization, you see that a lot and in, in relationship to cotton thread as well. So what does mercerization mean? So it's actually a treatment for the cotton thread to improve the dye uptake. So what happens is the thread is put through a caustic solution under tension as well. And this causes the fibers of the cotton to swell and this helps it intake dye better. And through this process, it also strengthens the thread as well. So threads that are mercerized also have a bit, a bit more luster to them. And so they're going to be the color satura saturation is going to be better on mercerized threads. So we already have questions that are like, oh, is cotton thread stronger than polyester and things like that? I, I love that because we're going to get into that a little bit as well. Um, sorry, Kennedy, before we move on, I just wanted to touch on one more thing um, with the cotton thread, which is what does the ply mean? So you'll see two ply and you'll see three ply thread. So ply is just kind of like how many strands of thread are then twisted together to create the final piece of thread. And so with a three ply strand, you're actually going to have a rounder shape for that thread because the three strands are going to stack together in a way where it's almost always kind of more round in shape. Whereas a two ply is going to sit flatter. It's going to be more oval in shape. So that's going to help it sink into the fabric more and blend more. So usually for lighter weight threads, we tend to use like a two ply because that's going to sit into your fabric more and help help blend more. Whereas a three ply is gonna sit a little bit nicer on top of the fabric and not sink in as much. Um, and so you'll be able to see those stitches a little bit more. So. I, is it true? We have a question that says, is it true that you should be using cotton in quilting? You can use cotton in quilting, but that is not the only thread that you can use in quilting. So to get into some of the other materials that you can use for quilting as well, we're going to talk about, you know, polyester, metallic, rayon, glow in the dark, reflective, there's really tons of different types of threads that you can see. So in the next image, you can see the different types of materials that that you could use in quilting. And so again, it's always about choosing the thread that is going to achieve the result you want. Do you want it to have a sheen? Do you want it to be matte? Is it going to be washed a lot? Is it for like a baby? Or is it going to just be like a wall hanging? All these things kind of play into... Um, which, which thread you should choose for quilting. So we've talked a lot about cotton. Now we should talk a lot about polyester as well. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the polyester, is, the polyester game has changed a lot. So um, there's really a lot more options you can use for quilting besides just cotton now. And polyester is a really big family of that. So someone said, I use polyester embroidery thread. Is that a problem? So I think it's good to understand what different types of thread are because a polyester embroidery thread, you're probably talking about a 40 weight polyester. And so that is not 
purely an embroidery thread. It's great for embroidery, but it can actually have a lot of other purposes as well. And yes, you can use a 40 weight polyester. Um, you're probably talking about a trilobal polyester for quilting. And yes, you can absolutely use that in your quilting as well. And it gives you a really nice sheen. And a lot of people actually do prefer that in their quilting because they want their design to show or they want their stitches to pop a little bit more. And so absolutely, you can use like a 40 weight trilobal polyester. So that's just one type of polyester that we talked a little bit about in the embroidery thread segment as well, that you can also use for quilting. And so another type of polyester, like I mentioned, there is a really big range of different types of polyester. So even now, there is like bad quality polyester out there. So you really need to kind of like try different threads and see what works and doesn't work and pick brands that are known for like good quality, especially if you're going to be using it in your quilting. So the next type of polyester we're going to talk about is cottonized polyester. And this is a really awesome type of polyester that we have at Wonderfill, and it's one of the ones that we're really known for. So this is a poly. It's 100% polyester, even though it's called cottonized polyester. But we treat the thread so then it doesn't have any shrink or stretching properties to it anymore. And like I mentioned earlier, that's usually what might cause issues like puckering or people worrying about it cutting into their fabric over time. And so with this poly, it has none of that. And it also has a bit more of a matte finish. So the matte finish is, again, going to help you blend into the, the cotton fabric a bit more. It's not really going to stand out too much. And I have really awesome um, examples of that later on in the segment. So um, we're getting a lot of questions on the side. So I'm just going to look through them really quickly and see if there's any I can um, answer here. But I did see one comment that said, um, is polyester stronger than cotton? Because of the way polyester is made, um, especially if you're talking about lighter weight threads, then yes, polyester is going to be stronger than cotton. Because if you think about, you know, what I explained earlier with the fibers being twisted together to create that cotton, um, you can't make a cotton thread too fine because you don't have enough threads interlacing to create that strength. And so that's why you'll never really see a cotton in a hundred weight or really rarely see it in an 80 weight. You really only see it up to like a 50 or 60 weight. And that's where you generally find most cottons end at for the range because of the way that cotton is made. It's just gonna lose too much strength if you try to make it too thin. So that's why we have to look into other materials to make thin thread. And that's where things like our cottonized polyester come into play because we can make a really fine thread that still stays really, really strong. And so we can use these to make all our fine threads and you can't do that with uh, cotton. So in that way, polyester would be stronger in that case, but it always depends on what you're, what you're trying to do and what weight the thread is as well, okay? And so the next thing I wanna talk about is rayon and metallic. So can you use these in quilting? Absolutely, you can definitely use these in quilting. Um, one thing I want to say, though, is rayon and metallic are definitely more decorative threads. You're using them in a decorative capacity. You want to be using these either in an art quilt or more wall hanging style of quilting and not so much something that you're going to be putting on your bed or giving to a baby, something that's going to be washed all the time because rayon does weaken in water. And so Again, that's another reason not to fully use rayon on to be the one thing that holds the three layers of your quilt sandwich together. If you are going to be using rayon, maybe you try using other threads in the piece as well to give it a bit more strength. So if you are going to put it in the washer, if it's going to need some durability, it, it'll have a bit more of that from the other threads um, assisting that way. Okay. Um, we also have glow in the dark and reflective thread as well. So these are specialty threads for effects in your quilting. And I have some awesome samples about, you know, how to use those threads or just some examples of like how you can use them in your, in your quilts as well. Um, one second, I'm just gonna take a sip of water here. 
So a question we got was, when you use a metallic thread for decorative top stitching, what bobbin thread and weight should you use? So in all the samples that I'm going to show you today, we are using an 80 weight bobbin thread. So that's our 80 weight deco bob. And so I would say um, 80 weight or 60 weight at least is what we recommend for, for any type of sewing. It's, it's generally better to have a lighter weight thread in your bobbin. It's going to last, your bobbin's going to last longer. You're not going to see as much stitches in the back and it's going to reduce the bulk in whatever you're doing. And this is going to play a big part when we talk about piecing because thread really takes up a lot of space in your seam bulk. And so, um, I did dive into metallic threads specifically um, more in the last segment. And I think um, you guys can find that on the Sewing Machine Plus YouTube channel. So go back there. I don't want to get into metallic too much in this segment because I have so much information to cover today. So with that, I want to jump into making your quilt top. So that's kind of like the first step of, you know, your, your quilting journey. So pretty much what you're doing when you make your quilt top is your piecing. There's different ways to piece. There's, you know, your traditional machine piece, piecing, there's English paper piecing, there's foundation paper piecing. And those are kind of like the few different ways that we can piece a quilt together. And if you use cotton 50 weight for all of those different types of techniques, that's perfectly fine. But Again, I'm here to show you some other threads that you might be able to use and that might give you, you know, more desired results than, you know, your regular 50 weight cotton. So let's look at machine piecing first. So I'm going to go to the next image finally <laughs> and show you guys. This is, um, I we did some foundation paper piecing here, but this is using a 50 weight in the top and bottom versus using an 80 weight in the top and bottom. And I don't think I have to say too much because you can really tell just based off the image what a difference that makes. You can really see the seams are flatter, everything is a lot crisper, and all the points are sharper. And you don't really notice that until you change the thread. And so I always tell people, you know, you don't really have to level up your skill. You can just change your thread and suddenly you look like a better sewer already because like, look at how flat those seams are. It's almost, you won't be able to get that using the 50 weight. And this is the same person that made both of these samples using the same fabric, same technique, ironed it the same amount, and this is the difference. And you can really see this is purely just a thread difference in these two images. And so now you can really think about using the 50, or instead of using a 50 weight, you can really think about using that 80 weight top and bottom to do your piecing. And so there's actually a lot of benefits to using a lighter weight thread because, you know, your thread, you, you know, eats into your seam allowance sometimes and it does create a bit of seam bulk and especially if you are sewing something together or piecing something together that has a lot of like points or like meeting spots for like seams and you always get that really thick chunky part using a lighter weight thread is really going to reduce that a lot and it's going to make matching up those points a lot a lot easier so um so with using the lighter weight 80 weight thread, you can actually drop your stitch length down as well and still get a stronger or just as strong seam as using a 50 weight cotton. So the 80 weight, what I like to do is actually drop it down to 1.5 to 2 or 1.5, 1.8 or 2 even. You can make really small stitches with this 80 weight and you still get a flatter seam than using the 50 weight. And when your stitches are closer together, you're actually going to get a lot more precision when you piece. And this is going to matter when I said earlier with points, you know, you get tighter miters, you get smoother curves. And I'm going to show you an example of that in a little bit. But um, especially if also you have intricate piecing or like really small designs, using that finer weight thread is really going to be awesome for that. 
And then I'll show you the next image is you can see here, we just like played again with different weights of thread. This is like a super close up image. And you can see using a 50 weight top and bottom and then a 50 weight on top and then an 80 weight in the bottom, you can already see that seam bulk is getting reduced. And then the finest thread, the 80 weight top and bottom, wow. Like that is very flat. You can barely see the stitches. And that's another thing with the amazing thing of using an 80 weight thread is, you know, when you're finding thread for piecing, a lot of people try to match their thread colors exactly. But as you can see here with like a gray and a really bright green or yellow, what thread would you choose as your piecing thread? Because you're worried about when you open up those, when you open up your fabric, that you're going to see the little tiny stitches in between and you want it to be less noticeable. And so that's why you would try to match those thread colors there. But when you use that 80 weight and you reduce and you reduce the stitch length, then you get a tighter seam. And even when you open it up, you don't see the thread as much. And even if you do, because the thread is so fine, you don't really see what color it is as obviously. So you don't have to worry about finding the exact thread color to match, you know, what piece you're piecing with. Okay, now I talked a little bit about curves as well, because this makes a huge difference when you're sewing a curve. So I think we can see the next image. I think I put curves. Yep. So if you think about us sewing a curve together, a curve is round, but when we stitch, our stitches are little straight lines. Each little stitch is a little straight line. So if you have a larger stitch length, like, you know, 2.5 or something like that, and you try to sew a curve, it's not going to be super round. And it depends on how big your curve is or how big your piece is as well. But with using that 80 weight and you can reduce your stitch length down, you get a lot more tiny straight lines. And because of that, you can make a much smoother curve than using like a 50 weight thread. And I'm getting a lot of questions with, um, does it make it harder to use a seam ripper when using an 80 weight? No, I, I almost exclusively piece with 80 weight thread and I have to do a lot of, you know, uh, backward sewing, let's call it. So, and so I'm, I'm very familiar with using seam rippers and I've never had an issue using a seam ripper and like ripping off, uh, ripping up, uh, the 80 weight thread. Um, maybe it'll take like not that much longer, but like a little bit because there are a few more stitches, but once you get it going, it really comes out really easily. And I don't think it's going to cause you any more problems or make it a lot more difficult to use. So um, again, using that 80 weight, let's cover that. You get a tighter seam and you get a lot more accuracy when you're doing your piecing and especially like curves and things like that, you can get much smoother curves. So let's look at some samples. I think the next picture, you can really see how crisp those lines look when you open up, when you open it up, you don't really see the cross sections of your thread and then I think I have a paper piecing sample as well next. So this is a, a pin for size reference. So you can really see how small this design is. And if I tried to make this, si uh, this size of um, piecing with an, a 50 weight thread, I think I'd have a lot of difficulty getting such crisp lines. And you would really see the fabric stack up a lot more. It would be really, really obvious and it wouldn't look as nice as this would. So using an 80 weight thread, especially when you're doing the, that smaller stuff is really fantastic. And so um, can you still use 50 weight for 50 weight cotton for piecing? Yes, again, you can use both for piecing. You can use the 80 weight and you can use the 50 weight cotton. Um, sometimes it's just a preference thing. If you really like using the 50 weight, then you can uh, absolutely continue using the 50 weight. And there's lots of awesome cottons out there for doing that. And um, 
if you're you if, um one thing though if you're piecing something that's about four inches or bigger like you're doing like a bigger work or something that's more simple like log cabins and you don't have like a lot of points or layers coming together then in that case then yeah use the 50 weight it might be you might go faster with like that little bit of a larger stitch length but if you're looking for tighter seams that are still flat and you want more accuracy in your piecing you definitely want to use a lighter weight thread like our 80 weight thread here okay so that's kind of one type of piecing that we're talking about kind of like traditional and foundation paper piecing but there's also another type of piecing which is english paper piecing I know we're, we've only been talking about machine threads, but you can definitely use some of these threads for hand sewing as well. So this one is English paper piecing. Of course, this is done by hand. And again, using that finer weight thread instead of a 50 weight, you can really see the stitches hide a lot more. Your piece is going to lay a lot flatter. And you can really see how crisp all these lines are in your block. And I think I have a closer image so you can really see it this is a this is like with hexes again if you're using a lot of different colors using something light like that hundred weight you don't have to match the exact color because the thread is so fine you're not really going to see those stitches anyways and you can see here we tried to go as close as we could but you can really really see you don't see those like whip stitches in between or the ladder stitches whatever you like to do for your um, English paper piecing, it really hides a lot better using those finer weight threads. I love how people are already talking about ditch quilting. I I'm going to get into that as well um, later on. <laughs> I'm just reading the comments. My head is spinning from all this information. Let me know if I'm going too fast. I can slow it down a little bit, but I just have so much to share with you guys today. So this is English paper piecing. So we kind of covered the few different types of piecing. Traditional foundation paper piecing, English paper piecing. If you're piecing on the machine, I do recommend that you don't go lighter than the 80 weight for your piecing. I think the 100 weight is really good, but it's, um, it's a little bit fine for foundation or like traditional piecing on the machine, but it's fantastic for English paper piecing. And for English paper piecing, you can use the 50, you can use the 80, you can use a 60, you can use a 100. Again, the finer you go, the less you're going to see um, your stitches. So another example of, you know, things that you do on your quilt top is applique. There's tons of quilt tops that are made with like lots of applique on them. So what kind of threads are great for applique? So again, we're going to talk about that hundred weight thread called Invisifil. So this is a cottonized polyester, the same type of material I talked about earlier and in a hundred weight. So remember that picture we saw at the beginning, this is the finest thread that we carry. And so we want to use these fine weight threads when we don't want to see the thread show. So an example where this would be good to use is applique. So you can see here hand applique. I know it's hard to see. I tried to um, pick some closer up images as well. But you really don't see the thread show. So especially if you're, you know, you want to, if you are worried about your stitches or even if you're new, it, you can use that hundred weight and your and your work is going to look really, really good already because you don't see those stitches and people might think that you've been doing applique for a really long time. And just for reference, a hundred weight is this, this hundred weight Invisifil is the same weight as like a hundred weight silk thread. So silk is what, you know, a lot of people have used traditionally and applique as well. We don't sell silk thread, but our Invisifil is the same weight and is comparable to the silk. And it's actually got more texture to it as well. So it's actually less slippery to work with. And it works amazingly in the machine and it and by hand. And it's definitely strong enough for you to do any hand sewing. What I like to say, though, is don't have like a super long piece of thread to work with. You just want to use something that's not longer than the length of your forearm. Okay. And then let's see some closer up images of the applique. So this is the, the piece overall. So it's actually quilted with the 100 weight. And then it's also hand and machine applique. So from a distance, you can't even tell 
that one is machine applique and one is hand applique. You probably could guess that both are hand applique because you won't see the thread at all. And so I'll show you a closer up image of these samples now. So this is the edge of the hand applique. And you can see the thread hides so well, you can't even see it at all. And now let's go to machine applique. I think that's on the next page. I tried to zoom in as close as possible, but you can really, you don't see those stitches. And we're actually using a zigzag here. We're not even using like a blanket stitch or anything like that, because we really want to show you how far the thread can go. And like that, you know, especially with those finer weight threads, again, you can drop the stitch length. So you can make smaller blanket stitches or smaller zigzags to do your applique. And it really, really hides those stitches super well using those lightweight threads. And so you can make applique a lot easier and just do it on the machine because it looks just as good as the needle turn, really. You can barely tell the difference. And so this is an instance where you're using kind of more lightweight threads to do applique but of course there's also threads to do applique where you do want to see your stitches so let's go to those samples as well oh this is a closer up image i went even closer so you can really see i'm trying to show you that you can't see those stitches at all and those are tiny little zigzags that are on the edge there all right, so this is an example of when you want your applique to show. So this is a quilt that was made by Susan Cleveland, and she's using our 12-weight Egyptian cotton spaghetti thread here. And so she's appliqued all the petals on the daisy. Actually, everything in this piece is done with the 12-weight because she did mis machine stitching with the 12-weight, and then she doubled it up and did hand quilting on the right side, and then the middle is needle punch with the 12-weight, and then the outside of the daisies are applique with the 12-weight. So there's sometimes where you want your applique to show and sometimes where you don't want your applique to show. So think about thread weight again. If you want your stitches to show, you want to be using those heavier weight threads. If you don't want your stitches to show as much, you want to be using those lightweight threads. So that's why it's really important to know how thread weight works because it really plays a really big part into choosing um, what type of thread you want to be using for your quilt. So with a 12 weight thread, you want to be using something like a 9014 top stitch needle. Okay, so I forgot to touch it, touch on this a little bit, um, but it'll it'll matter a little bit more um, later on as well. But with the hundred weight, a lot of people actually come come to us and ask. Also, do you sell monofilament thread? So the answer is no, we don't sell any monofilament thread. So for those of you guys that don't know, monofilament is kind of like a it's almost like a fishing line kind of thing. It's like a see-through type of thread. And so a lot of people use that because that was what was available maybe back then. And th that's the thread they used when they were like, oh, I don't want to see the thread. But now we know if you don't want to see the thread, use a finer weight thread. Monofilament is not very easy to sew with and it doesn't age well as well and it only comes in two varieties it comes in like a clear and a smoke and actually because of the material it is it's actually got a bit of shininess to it as well so even if you use like the smoke color on like a darker piece of fabric once that quilt or whatever you did it on hits light that monofilament's going to reflect it and it's actually going to look shiny and show more obviously than if you used like a finer weight thread and like I said, the monofilament doesn't age as nicely. Sometimes it, especially with the clear, can kind of yellow over time as well. So again, more reason to use finer weight threads to do things where you don't want to see your stitches showing as much than if you used monofilament. And I'm getting a lot of questions about needle sizes because we are talking about different weights of thread needle sizes does matter because you want to be using the right size needle for your projects so on our website on wonderful.ca if you go to resources we actually have hints and tips for every type of thread that we carry and we have recommended needle sizes for everything as well i usually find that if you're if your thread is shredding, your needle might be 
uh, too small. The needle eye might be too small. And if your thread is like snapping or like breaking, it probably is too big or it can be that reason as well. And another thing as well is I know you guys don't do this enough, but you guys need to change your needles. You can't use the same needle forever. So <laughs> please practice good needle manners like you got to change your needle after a project or after like eight to ten hours of sewing you should change your needle and if you don't and if you find that everything was working perfectly and then all of a sudden your thread is breaking and things aren't working and everything got out of whack and you have no idea why you can start by changing your needle and re-threading the thread. And that will actually probably solve most of your issue issues because a lot of times there's like burrs that happen on the needle from, you know, using it for too long and they're hard to see with the naked eye. So it's really good practice to change your needle. And another thing is using different threads. I know people think about tension and things like that and they worry about, you know, like, do I have to touch my tension? And they're, and they're afraid to kind of like, you know, move that dial. You guys have amazing sewing machines. You guys have like such an awesome tool to play with. Don't limit yourself on what you can do or what you can use on your sewing machines because you don't want to touch, touch that tension dial. It's, it's quite simple. And once you understand how it works, you're going to feel really comfortable using any type of thread or, you know, kind of troubleshooting any problems. I find that if you find the thread is going to the bottom side of your piece, then it probably means your top tension is too loose. So that's why the thread is getting dragged to the bottom. And if you're finding that your bobbin thread is getting pulled to the top, probably your top tension is too tight. That's why it's pulling that bobbin thread to the top. So if you kind of keep these tips in mind, then you can play with your tension a little bit and see how to fix it and what it does and things like that. And another thing is when you're adjusting your tension for when you're about to quilt your piece, don't do it on like a single layer of fabric or scrap fabric that you have. You guys got to test it on the same thing that you're about to do. So if you're going to sew on like a quilt sandwich, then you need to be testing your tension on like a quilt sandwich because it's not going to be the same if you just test it on a single layer of fabric and then go to a quilt sandwich because there's the, then so much more density that you're going through and it, it really changes things. So you need to test it on the same thing that you're going to be sewing on and not just, you know, the scrap fabric from the bin and not wanting to waste any extra batting or backing and things like that. So kind of keep those things in mind when you're playing with different types of thread and doing different types of techniques and, and things like that as well. Okay, so this is the applique with the 12 weight. We kind of went off track there a little bit. So this is the applique with the 12 weight. And then we also have applique with rayon threads as well. I think I have a large image on the next page. Yeah of this is like applique where we did it with some rayon threads and we did a satin stitch around the different pieces of this quilt block. And so this is another example of like, oh, I wanted to show, I wanted to be decorative. Again, like what we said earlier, you can use rayon in a decorative capacity. And this is like a perfect example of a quilt block and using rayon together. And so you want that bit of sheen, you want it to show using decorative threads is perfect for that. And in, in this example, we used the rayon. Okay, now we've talked a little bit about the applique. Let's get into actually quilting. So now we've talked about like how to put your quilt top together and the different types of techniques that are involved with, with doing a quilt top. But now let's get into quilting. All right, so look here we are using different types of thread on the same piece and you can see very different results the 40 weight that's kind of like what you're used to 40 or 50 weight you can't really tell too much of a difference and then you really see with the 100 weight and the 12 weight they give really different effects the 100 weight really hides a lot more you're focused more than on the texture of your quilting and not so much the thread being the star, but with the 12 weight, you're trying to get your stitches to pop and you really want 
the thread to show and, and things like that. So this is just an example of like using different weights and how they kind of look. We use the same color on each one and you can really see how that thread performs. And even using a yellow on the purple with the Invisifil, you don't really see the thread color that much because that thread is so fine. So this is what I keep saying, like the thread is really fine. So you don't really see the color too much. You don't see the stitches too much. And we're using such a contrasting color um, together and you still like barely can tell what that color is. All right, so let's keep looking at samples. So these are different types of materials that you can use for quilting, very common, 50 weight cotton. Our master quilter is a 40 weight in the cottonized polyester. And then we also have a 40 weight trilobal polyester as well. So between the 40 and 50 weight, you actually can't really see too much of a difference between how thick that thread shows. So you don't have to worry too, too much when choosing between like a 40 and 50 weight thread. Um, it really just depends on what kind of like sheen you wanted to have or how much you wanted to blend. But that also plays into what color you choose as well. Obviously, if you're going to choose like a contrasting color, like a blue on a yellow, you are going to see <laughs> that thread pop up more. But if you choose like a yellow, obviously it's going to blend. So thread color is going to play a part in, you know, what you want your quilting to look like as well. So when you start off with your project and you're thinking about what thread should I use, you should really ask yourself some questions like, what do you want the thread to deliver? Do you want it just to hold everything together? Do you want the thread to show or not show? Do you want it to be like lightweight versus heavyweight or shiny versus matte? Do you want to add color? Do you want to add texture? And then sometimes like, I know like some machines are a little bit fussier and they prefer like a cotton thread or a polyester thread and that's just the way it is. And so like that kind of plays into everything as well. And so ask yourself these questions before starting your next quilting project and think about how thread can really play a role in your design, not just piecing it together, but really, you know, creating depth and layers and like accenting certain parts more and maybe like pushing certain parts back a little bit. And so how do you pick a stitch length? Does that matter? Yes, generally with like lighter weight threads, you do want to reduce your stitch length a bit. You want to make it a little bit smaller. And then the opposite is true with like a larger stitch, uh, with a larger thread. So if you're using like the 12 weights and heavier threads like that, you do want to increase the stitch length a little bit because it's actually not even going to look very nice if you have like a 12 weight that's like made with a lot of really tight, small stitches. You're not going to get the beauty of the thread. Okay, so the next picture I have, um, if we can go, go to the next slide, this is some 12 weight and you can really see the threads pop. It adds a lot of texture. So now I'm just gonna show you guys like samples of different types of quilts and like different types of threads that you guys can use. So you can really see th uh, this piece is really textured. And like we're using a 12 weight rayon metallic here. It's called Glamour. And so I have it here. And here so you can really see this is like a heavier weight thread it really shows and we're using it because we want those stitches to pop and add some texture to that quilt so if we go back to that quilt and and look at it you can really see it has some shininess to it it has like pops of color it looks really fun and i think we can see like the big the big picture here and you can really see even from a distance you can see like the lines of the quilting and it adds like quite a bit of texture to this quilt and the quilting is part like the quilting that you've done on top is now part of the design as well because you can really see how obvious those lines are that you've created with the thread okay so i think we're gonna see a few more heavy weight threads so again this one is a 12 weight so again we're using that 12 weight spaghetti thread i talked about this is the 12 weight egyptian cotton and you can see all those colors really pop out at you it really stands out you only have to do like 
one row of stitches and like that's already like a ton of color you don't have to go back and forth to create that bold pop look and so if you did this whole quilt in 12 weight I think you would lose the specialness or like the design and you can actually see the little pebbles that we did and the little background quilting, we actually used Invisifil in the background because like we still want to add texture there. But if we use 12 way through the whole thing, it would just be like a lot and too much would be screaming out at you and you wouldn't know what to look at. But by using a 12 weight and a, and a, and a hundred weight in the same piece, then you can create layers in your quilting. And this is just like, I think this is like a whole cloth. Like we didn't even piece this. This is just like on a single piece of fabric, but the thread has done all the design for this quilt to bring it together. And you've created a lot of different textures by using that lighter weight thread and using that heavier weight thread. Um, I think I have a picture of the whole quilt on the next page. It's hard to see. I know a picture can only do so much, but you really see like with that 12 weight all those colors really pop so much and then everything behind there and all that empty space if you continue to use 12 weight it would just look too busy and too much and so that's why with 100 weight especially in this photo you really can't see it I wish you could see the texture a little bit more but it it goes into the background and and it brings forward the the 12 weight even more okay so I think that's that for that picture and then the next slide I think I have some more examples of this. So this one, we actually have three different weights of thread. We have a 50 weight, we have a 12 weight, and we have a 100 weight. Again, we're just trying to create layers in our quilting and, and use that as part of the design. And, and these are like obviously examples to show you the difference between all of these. Like you don't have to always use like different types of thread in the same quilt you can do whatever you you want to do or or have the type of look that you want to have but this just goes to show you like the 12 weight is the one that's outlining the outside of the rectangle and then the squares on the inside are using a 50 weight so you can still see again you can see these threads really obviously you can definitely tell that the outer layer pops a little bit more the inside's a little bit softer and then we want these squares to be the, at the forefront of the design. So we've quilted it and added a lot of texture with the hundred weight in the background there. So you really see like a lot of, you know, dimension to this piece. And so, yeah, someone looks, said it looks like a towel because of that hundred weight thread. You can really do really small stippling and quilting like all that micro quilting, you can really get really, really small. And your pieces actually stay really soft still, even with all that dense stitching in there because you're using a lighter weight thread. If you tried to do this with like a monofilament or like with a 40 or 50 weight thread, you would definitely feel how dense your quilt would be if you did that with that type of thread. So again, people are asking about the bobbins. So all of our samples that we're showing you are using our 80 weight deco bob bobbin in the back. And then the next picture I think is just like a larger photo or some more examples of different, um, different spots on this quilt. So you can see again, using that heavier weight to outline and using those lighter weights to create interesting design and kind of like depth to your piece because it really pushes things back and helps pop certain elements forward. And then I think I have like a final photo of it completely big. So you can really see from a distance again, you can see the texture actually of this one a bit more. You can see the texture of the quilting in the background, but then you really see like the elements of those designs, like all those squares really come forward a lot. And again, if you only used one weight of, fab of, of thread for this whole piece, you would definitely lose all that texture. Okay, now on to the next piece here. We're going to start getting into territory that I love a lot, which is the lightweight threads. We've talked a lot about how amazing they are, and I'm just going to continue talking about how amazing they are. So here again, you can see we're playing with different weights of thread, and you can really do so much with that 100. It creates so much texture, but you don't see all the thready look to it. And I think I have a closer up image as well, so you can see the texture a little bit better. 
but you can really do really, really, really small quilting again, because you can like have a smaller stitch length and you can get really intricate design by using those lighter weight threads. And in this instance, we're using the hundred weight in this sample here. Okay, so let's keep moving on here. And then now we're talking about stitch in the ditch. So I think there was already some comments earlier about stitch in the ditch because yes, that is definitely one of the most common quilting techniques. And so most people, again, if you've been using like a 40 or 50 weight thread, absolutely no problem. It, again, it's up to your preference what you use. But think about if you change the thread to 100 weight. And now in both samples, we actually came out of the ditch on purpose because we wanted to show you if you did come out of the ditch, how would that look like? Because, you know, not all of us are like expert sewers that can stay in the ditch all the time. So in the sample on the left with that 50 weight, we tried to like match it with the, the best thread that we could, but you can still see it kind of like still shows, especially if you have like different colors of fabric that aren't the same. And that's hundred percent going to be the case because you're always going to have different colors in your quilt block and in your piecing. So how do you choose like a color, especially if it's like a 50 weight? It matters a lot less if it's a hundred weight because you can really see even when we came out of the ditch on the right hand side, you can barely tell what color that is. And we still chose like a peach color for both of them, but you really see the thread hides so, so well. So again, this is another example of like, all you have to do is change the thread and suddenly it looks like you're amazing <laughs> at sewing because like you don't even see when you come out of the ditch so over here we we don't say you have to stitch in the ditch you can just stitch in the neighborhood and you're still good so don't worry about popping out of the ditch if you use invisifil you'll be good okay so that's stitch in the ditch and this is another one again we try to pop out of some places you really don't see when you're like coming out onto the side of the, the fabric. Like it doesn't show very much because the thread hides just so, 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 so well. So let's talk about choosing colors now because like Invisifil is actually, if we can come onto a, a picture of me, Invisifil comes in all, oh, it comes in all sorts of different colors. And when you look at a spool of Invisifil, it might look, very colored like it looks like oh that's like definitely gray but if you look at a, a single strand up close in person it looks white on the screen here but if you put that against fabric it really hides super well and that's something that again like I mentioned earlier that monofilament can't do because it's got that shininess to it and, and, it and it doesn't actually blend that well with your fabrics but having a little bit of color actually helps blend in with your fabrics a lot more and that's why Invisifil is colored it doesn't just come in a black and a white and a gray it comes in 60 different colors but you don't have to choose the exact color you can choose something close and it'll still still blend in super super well because of how fine it is it's a two ply it's just going to sink into your fabric and hide super super well so let's go back to the sample that I was about to show you on the next page is we used three different colors of Invisifil here we used a white uh, a green color on the top a white color or a gray color in the middle and then on the bottom I think we used like a light yellow color and you can see from a distance, when you first look, you can't, you can't barely tell what the color is. Of course, with the green color, it's still contrasted enough because we're doing this on white fabric that you're probably going to see it. But, you know, with like the gray and like the softer yellow color, it like almost blends in with the white and you can't even tell that you used that use like a color on there and then it blends super well with all the colored blocks on there as well so it's it does matter a little bit like if you want it to show you can make it show but if you want it to hide it's pretty easy and just choosing like light neutral colors that kind of play with the shades that are in your piece 
Invisafill is going to do an amazing job. And generally, if you're using like cooler shade colors and you can choose like more grays and stuff like that. And if you're using like warmer colors in your piece, then you can try using like beiges and things like that as well. So we'll go into the next piece here. And this is the lion. I actually am proud because I made this quilt. So I know everything about it. I used 80 weight to piece the whole thing. It's a foundation paper piecing pattern by Violet Craft. And so you can see, especially in the eyes and stuff, there's so many places where the seams meet and you can get a lot of seam bulk. So I used 80 weight in this whole quilt and it's a game changer. And people ask about like the strength of the 80 weight. And you can see here, I made this entire quilt and it was really easy to do with that 80 weight thread and matching up the seams, everything like that was perfect. And then when I wanted to quilt this piece, I asked myself, what, what do I want to, what do I want to achieve with my quilting here? Essentially because this piece like the star of the show is really the lion's face, right? And that's really what I want people to see. I don't want all my quilting thread to be kind of disrupting the pattern because the pattern is really the star here. That's what I want people to see. But I still want to be able to like quilt the whole thing. So in this case, when I was thinking about what to use, I was like, okay, I got to use Invisafill because I don't want to see all the thread on top of the lion's face and kind of like end up, you know, not achieving the results I want and having kind of like streaky lines through his face. And there's also so many different colors in this in this piece, right? There's like reds, there's like grays, there's blacks and whites. There's like the ends of the spectrum too. There's like white and black in here. And I don't want to have to change colors a bajillion times just to quilt this one piece, right? So if we go to the next page, what I ended up using was our 100 weight Invisafill. And guess what, guys? I just used one color for the whole entire piece. One color. I didn't change colors. This is just uh, a color I picked and I thought might blend in really well. And lo and behold, it like totally blended. It almost made it look like it was changing colors through the different blocks. Like it looks like cream on the cream and looks peach on the peach. And even so close up, you can't see like what color of thread I used here. I kind of want you guys to guess in the comments what 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 thread color do you guys think I used in this in this uh, lion here? Do we have any guesses? I'll reveal it. What color? You guys just want me to get to the answer. Okay. So I actually just showed this thread. It is this gray color. I used this gray color all the way through. Yep, everyone's saying gray peach, but no, I actually just used this gray color here. It is one of our best sellers. It is color number 718 in Invisafill. And oh my God, it just blended through the whole thing. And you can see even on the black and the gray, because this is a lighter color, you'd think it like contrast a little. And yes, if you look for it, you can obviously find it, but even from like such a close photo, you can barely see the stitches on there. And so using Invisafill was kind of like the best choice for doing this quilt. It didn't disrupt the pattern. It blended perfectly. I get the texture of the quilting, but I don't really see the thread being the star there. And then I have another example because I really love Violet's pattern. So I actually made her wolf as well. So this is the wolf. Again, it's a foundation paper piecing pattern. Again, I used the 80 weight deco bob in the top and bottom. And then I quilted it with Invisafill. Now let's go to the next image here. And this is a closer up photo. Again, we have like dark hues and light hues. We have like yellows and blues and so many different colors. So what I ended up using was this stormy blue color here. And it I found it blended so beautifully again through all of that work. This is that color, Invisafill 729. But again, it looks like it's like quite blue gray, but when it's on that fabric, 
it just blends and the hues are close enough. So it almost just like takes on when it's near and like hides really, really well. So again, like this color was not really even found in the whole wolf, but I decided to use this color because I thought, you know, with the blues and I don't need to have the exact color and I just wanted it to blend. And I'd rather it show a little bit lighter than darker on the light parts. So that's why I use like a lighter color and it worked so beautifully. And again, if we go back to the picture of the whole wolf, you can't really see any thready look, especially on the white parts. Like it blended so beautifully on the white parts and even on the dark gray background as well. And I think I have a closer photo of the wolf is wolf's no oh no maybe not I didn't include that all right that's all right we're gonna move on to the next thing so those are the two quilts that I made and I wanted to show you some more Invisafil and Deco Bob so again if you have a piece that has like tons of different colors on it like this one here by Carolina Juanito she uses Deco Bob and Invisafil a lot this has so many different colors to it and if you're not wanting to change thread a lot or if you don't want your thread to really be like the center of your piece then you should really think about using lighter weight threads because then you get the texture of the quilting and it's it's nice and strong it holds your quilt together but you don't really get that really like thready look and pull away from what you want people to see when they're looking at your quilt okay so that's that picture i think i have some more invisafil again a lot of texture. So actually, interestingly enough, the flower on the left hand corner here in the colors is actually made with Invisafil as well. So again, if you're trying to contrast it on purpose, of course, you're going to see the thread. A, a red thread on white fabric isn't so magical that you wouldn't see it. But you can play with Invisafil and create really detailed looks and do some like micro quilting with with it. And I think I have a closer picture of it and you can really see you get really really tiny stitches and you can really create your own design by using this thread um if you want it to blend it'll blend if you want it to show it'll show and color does play a part in that so here obviously because it's a white background it's very contrasted and we used like way bolder colors in in the invisifil so you are going to see it a little bit more but it's kind of like subtle. It's not like in your face as in your face as like a 50 weight or like the um, the 12 weights and stuff. Obviously, it just depends on the look that you're trying to go for here. OK, so next up is another. I think we did some like Trapunto with the Invisifil as well. And it's great because you can do really dense, dense quilting and like really pop up what you want it to show and create a lot of dimension in your piece. Oh, yeah. And then this here, we're using a trilobal polyester. So I know a lot of people have been talking about trilobal polyesters and things like that. So this is a quilt using panels. So actually the geishas, none of them had color on them before. Actually all the color that you see on their robes and their hair pieces, everything like that is all made from thread. It's all thread painting, it's all quilting. And so you can really see thread can totally change the outcome of your work. So let's go up closer and see a little bit of that. So you can see here, this is done with our um, 40 weight trilobal polyester. So you guys were asking if you could use trilobal polyester in your quilting. Absolutely, you can use trilobal polyester in your quilting. This is just like a close up. You can really see this actually does have like a bit more sheen to it. The color pops, it looks really great. And I think we might have some more pictures as well. Yeah, so we did thread painting with the metallic thread. And then we get we used like a lighter um, a white color, but also in about like a 40 or 50 weight. So you can see the stitches in the back there. But because we chose a color that blends, it's going to fade into the background more and it creates texture. But you can still see the stitches more than if you use like a lighter weight thread even. And so here we're just playing with different weights of thread and colors and things like that. And so you can do really cool quilts with that too. This is another picture of the 40 weight trilobal polyester. And so I'm just kind of showing you guys like different pictures of the different types of threads that we've talked about so far. And so again, 
that sheen. It really makes it pop. It's really fun to use trilobal polyester as well in your pieces. So, so your 40 weight embroidery polyester is the same thread, same thread that we're talking about here. This is a 40 weight trilobal polyester. So we can keep going through the photos. And this is another quilt where a lot of different th thread weights were used. We have 12 weight here and we have 100 weight. Again, this quilt was done by Susan Cleveland. And so if we get a closer photo, I think I tried to like zoom in a little bit, but you can really see she used like 12 weight for hand quilting. Actually, I know we didn't talk a lot about hand quilting, but you can definitely use like our 12 weight spaghetti for hand quilting. It's really smooth. So it makes hand quilting really easy because your stitches just glide right through. And you can also use like even heavier threads because you're doing it by the hand and not machine. You can actually use those number eight pearl cottons and things like that. And then she also appliqued, you know, a bunch of these pieces on here. And so you can get really crisp, nice. Well, her work is obviously just amazing in general, but using that Invincifil is really great for like applique and things like that. So you can really see it in this piece. And then this next one. So I showed you that quilt block earlier with that rayon. So this is like the final thing that was quilted. So we used Invisifil in the background. So you can really see all that texture, but you really want your quilt pop or quilt blocks to pop. So that's why we use that finer weight thread. And we didn't use like a 50 weight or like a 12 weight because it would really take away from like the design of like those really pretty quilt blocks in the center. And then again, more 40 weight trilobe. We'll see here, like closer up compared to the close up images of like Invisifil, you do see like the individual stitches a lot more and it's gonna be more textured in a different way. So depends on what you want, but nothing is right or wrong. It just depends on like the type of finish that you wanna have. So these ones are more examples of like some quilting with the 12 weight. So you can really see like the pebbles like those stitches really pop out and it's part of the design and it's it's a little bit more in your face. And then we also did the applique with the 12 weight as well. So you really were trying to see the thread here. Yeah, lots of texture. And then this is 50 weight cotton. Perfectly good, looks just as good as like any of the other ones do. Again, it's preference. So yes, absolutely. I love 50 weight for quilting as well. It It's really nice and soft and it just depends on what you like. So nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to show you guys some 50 weight cotton. I didn't show you guys a lot of it because I think that's what you guys have probably seen the most of. And so that's why I've tried to show you more of like the heavy and the light stuff because you probably have seen less of that. So let's go to the next next picture here. And then we use our metallic. So if you want some subtle shine or sparkle in your in your work, then absolutely go for it. Use that metallic thread in your sewing machine. Don't be afraid. I gave you guys some really good tips in last week's video. So go check that out if you haven't seen it already. And then, oh, I might've repeated that. Or I think it's that then, oh, now we have glow in the dark. I know someone said they wanted to see the glow in the dark sample. So this is glow in the dark. We quilted it with glow in the dark thread. So this is it with, you know, normally looks pretty good. And then at night, especially if you have like kids or grandkids, it's so fun. And you can like really create like a whole new design just like with the thread because it just comes alive when the lights go out. And you can really see going back and forth these these two differences. And then next, I think this is my last one, is reflective thread. So we actually have a reflective thread as well called flash. So if you take a picture of it with like your, your smartphone with the flash on, this is it normally. And then with the flash on, you can see, boom. We didn't put it throughout the whole quilt, but we just like outlined it and put in, put it in certain places. You can see his eyes and like the pumpkin really pop. So it's like a fun thing to do. Again, it's like a different type of thread that you might want to try using in your quilting. Maybe you can put a secret message in your quilt that you only see when you take a picture with it. So those are, those are some fun examples of like how I might use a flash in my quilting or something like that. But these are, all, uh, these are just kind of fun elements that you can add in for effect into your work. All right. So with that, I think that is my last example. 
And um, I've gone way over time. I think I was supposed to keep it to an hour, but you see, this is why I can't keep thread talks to just like a one hour thing and cover everything. There's truly too much to talk about. And I know you guys, um, there's already some questions about like long arming. Of course that um, comes into consideration because we're talking about quilting here. Long arming is definitely its, its own thing. And that's why on the 23rd, I believe that's the next Friday I'll be on we're going to be deep diving into long arming threads a little bit more. And then the last session that I'll do at the end of the month will be about sergers. So if you guys have long arms or sergers or are interested about that, make sure you join in for those sessions as well. And like Kennedy said, I won't be on next Friday for the thread talk, but I'll actually be on two times, I think on Monday and Wednesday, um, for some half an hour segments during SoFest as well. You heard it. So and get more Calista next week. Oh my gosh, you're fine. I was sitting here and looking at all of the different, especially the Invisifil was what really just had me glued to the screen. It almost looks like watercolor. Like if you look at it from far away, it looks so gorgeous up against the white. And if you use a color that you can't see from far away, I just love that texture on a quilt. Yes. Like sometimes you don't even have to do, you know, anything else or any other piecing and stuff. If you just take a plain fabric and put some texture on it with that Invisifil, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> I, I love this. It really is. It I feel all. like your I feel like your sewing machine is like your paintbrush and like your threads are your paints. And you shouldn't just limit yourself to like oil paints or watercolors. There's really so exactly. much you can play with that you can do and you need to think about it from that aspect. You're not going to buy like a really awesome paintbrush and only ever use one type of paint on it. You're going to exactly. try and play and experiment and see, you know, sewing is creative and I always tell people even though I'm showing you all these samples it really depends on what you like and what you want it to look like you don't have to make it look like this but I want to share this information so you can understand what the different threads do and really yes you know get a good idea of of all of it so you can pick the yeah. best thing for your project and like you were saying too thread is like a mixing medium you know you can use it in any way you want especially with you know you could do thread painting you could do templates you could do ruler work, like whatever you wanted to do like the options are endless but that invisifil highly recommend to anyone who is looking to kind of up their quilting game a little bit it is so nice and i've seen it in person and people stitched out in person photos do not do it justice if you thought the <laughs> pictures were awesome you have to go try and see it in person it's it is true. so gorgeous like if, you, if you guys ever catch us at a show like come into our booth and just like yes. even if you're not there to do anything else but see samples like you should come and just see the samples like touch it feel it see what we're talking about because i try my best to like give the best photos i can and convey that message on screen but really like you said like yeah. seeing it in person and touching it in person is like totally different. So if you, yeah. any of you guys are going to Houston, you can catch me there. Ooh, I don't know. I don't think I'm going, but if you guys go say hi to Calista for me. For sure. <laughs> but um, well, thank you so much, Calista, for coming on. I had so much fun today. I know you probably got a busy schedule and you're probably prepping for SoFest too. So I I'll know, go I'm and like, let you gotta, go. Gotta prep for Monday <laughs> session now. Yes. Yes. Well, if you need me, I'm right here so thank you <laughs> but guys I will go so ahead. much and yes, I and yeah yes, I just they all love you them. so much yeah I just want to thank like you and like SMP Nation you guys are like so engaged throughout my whole talk and I I think I like will try to answer some questions and like save some of them from this talk and answer them next time because I've just like run so over time I don't want to keep yeah. going no, that <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's so many questions that I didn't even get to yet. So I'll try to like save some of them and scroll through the comments and like maybe do like a 10 minute QA, Q and A to start yeah. off next week's session and then like jump into um, long arming threads. But you guys are so awesome and so supportive. So thank you so much for having me S &S on again. And my favorite. What can I say? <laughs> well, all right, Calista. I will go ahead and let you go and do some giveaways with SMP Nation over here, but have an awesome weekend and we will see you on Monday. Sounds good. Have a good week every, or weekend, everyone. Happy Friday. <laughs> Bye. Happy Friday. <laughs> All right, you guys. Isn't she just the best? I'm just, I'm going to say that after every time she comes off, but she is just her knowledge and she's so well-spoken with everything and the samples that she does are just so 
give you such a good visual for what you're what you're looking at right it's so it's so great to have really good examples and see how intricate you can get and how simple you can get it really it's up to you which is awesome so with that let's go ahead and start on some giveaways let's get it going let me get some music on and let's start off okay so our first giveaway today i wanted to do this also mainly because we just went through all these different threads. So I thought what better way than to do a $100 gift card so that you guys can get shopping and try, you know, maybe some of that Invisifil, the Deco Bob. Those would be my two top choices if you're going to try Wonderfill. The Deco Bob is just so awesome for, um, you know, all different types of things, especially with the piecing and all that kind of stuff. If you really want the crisp lines and you don't want that thread showing up, it is so, so amazing and so worth it. And you can all shop on our website. So let me get this on the screen and let's see who's gonna win that $100 gift card. I mean, $100 off your order. You can't go wrong with that. You really can't. But let's see. Sula May, congratulations. You have just won a $100 gift card. So go ahead, I'll put this on the screen right here. Go ahead and head to smplive.tv to claim your prize and we will go ahead and send that out to you and you can get shopping. You know what? I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do one more and just give one more away so that way you guys have another chance to get $100 off your order. So let's go ahead and see. I'm spinning again. Let's see, ooh, wrong button. <laughs> Let's spin again and see who is going to win today. Dun, dun, dun. I'm seeing all my friends on here. Ginger is real. Congratulations. Now, Ginger, I know you are local, so you can either send in your form to smplive.tv or you can go into our stores and we can get you that gift card. Whatever works for you. Either way, we will get you that gift card. So you can either do the stores, go to the stores, or you can just fill out our form and we'll just email you that gift card. All right, well, congratulations, ladies. Let's see what else I've got for us today. The next thing is gonna be a iconic, world famous so mat. We know them, we love them. We've got tons of different colors and sizes. And if you win, you can pick what size you want. So say you've got a luminaire, you probably want to go with the extra large mat or if you've got let's see maybe a verve or a smaller machine or a smaller embroidery machine you can go for like a medium or if you've got a really teeny tiny cute little machine you can even go for the small so we have tons of different sizes small to extra large i believe and we have two new colors so we've got teal and cherry blossom both of them are adorable they are awesome so let's go ahead and see who is going to win the sewing mat today dun 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 it's always so fun seeing all the names on here. I'm like, oh, there's my friends. I see them all. There's all my buddies. <laughs> Noreen Olson, congratulations. You have just won a iconic SMP sew mat. So if you would like, go to smplive.tv to claim your prize. Pick your color and your size, and we will go ahead and get that shipped out to you and onto your doorstep. But I will just let you guys know, since we do do shows every single day and we do giveaways every single day, um, we do get a lot of people who submit a form. So if you um, are able to just give us about a seven day window and usually we will get that all out to you by that time. But we do do shows every day. So we got to make sure we get everybody their prizes and make sure it all runs smooth. So if you could just be a little patient that will be perfect and we thank you so much for just coming on and watching so i think my last giveaway i want to do today is from my magical box over here we all know i will come down here sometimes and pull out some merch or something like that so let's see and since we did quilting today i have some cute adorable quilting things to give away now this, I don't know, I have a question for you. I know some people do this and I know some people don't, so I just wanna hear from you. How many of you wear an apron when you sew? I've seen, I've done it before. I know a lot of people do it to protect their clothing, but I have got this adorable, <laughs> this says cereal quilter on it. It's one of our merch designs and it's a little apron that you can wear, so, 
I don't know if you guys would want. I can give one of these away and then I can do one more. So let me see. Let me reach down here real quick and see if I got a little bag or something like that. Okay, I think, I think I know what I'm doing. Okay, so no apron. You guys are saying no apron. You know what? I That's why I wanted to ask. I didn't want to throw that apron at you. I just wanted to ask. I wanted your opinion because these are your giveaways, right? <laughs> so what we're going to be giving away today is the most adorable little fanny pack from SMP. So it's got a little logo on it. This is just really simple. If you are traveling or maybe you're sewing and you need like to stash some thread in here or maybe your um, notions, things like that, this is perfect. And people probably say fanny packs are out of style they're coming back. I promise. I want to keep y'all in style. So they're coming back and I think this would be perfect. So let's go ahead and spin and see who's going to win this little fanny pack today. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And also I have a question for you guys. Once we find out this winner, Zena W, congratulations. Go ahead and head to smplive.tv. Oh no, I'm seeing, I'm seeing comments of the apron. Should we give away the apron too? I think we'll give away the apron too. Okay, so Zena, go ahead and head to smplive.tv to claim your prize. And then we'll go ahead and do the, we'll do the, we'll do the apron. Since you guys, since you guys wanted to. Okay, so this is the apron. I'll make sure it gets all folded and ready. But again, this is what it looks like. I mean, you can use it for cooking. Whatever you want to do. Aprons are great. Just protect your clothing. But it's so adorable. It's got cereal quilter on it. How funny is that? <laughs> so let's go ahead and see. And it's got little pockets. Very, very nice. Really nice quality apron. It's just awesome. It's great. So let's go ahead and spin one more time and see who's going to win. Dun, 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 dun. Sue Main King. I really don't want to mess up your name if that's how you pronounce it. If that's not, I'm so sorry. But Sue, you have won this adorable little apron. So go ahead and head to smplive.tv to claim your prize. We will get it all shipped out to you. Just give us a little bit of time so we can catch up on all of our giveaways and we will go ahead and get it right to your doorstep. All right, you guys. Now I have a question. I saw a comment earlier asking where is a place that we can go like uh, where smp nation can go to share their projects now here's my question if we made a facebook group with that anybody can join it's just a group that you guys can all join and it'll kind of be like a massive group chat you know for all of us to communicate i'd be on there we can all be on there blaine will pop on um but do you think that would be something that you guys would want so you can share products um share projects and we can we have like a little way that we can all communicate because we can do that that would be perfect so i'm seeing yeses so i can start working on that and we can get a group because i've been thinking about it but i wanted to ask you guys first because i take your guys's opinions and consideration so if that is what you guys want ask and you shall receive so yes i'm seeing a lot of a lot of yeses and then like if i go on there we can do little fun things we can do maybe it's like some special giveaways for smp nation alone you know so make sure you guys keep an eye out for that uh, if we end up doing it i'll put an announcement on our social media so nobody will miss out don't worry but yes i will get working on that then if you guys want to do that so perfect all right you guys answered my question well we have reached the end of our episode. Thank you guys so much for coming on and watching today's show. Um, and thank you to Callista and everybody at Wonderful for coming on and making this happen. I'm so happy that you guys are enjoying it. Um, Callista is just so great and so awesome. So it's really awesome and fun to have her come on for a whole month, every Friday for a month, besides next week. But that's SOFA, so that's an exception. But we've got this going on every Friday. So if you want to learn more about threads and more about um, the intricacies and the more thread education that we've got for you, then join in on the next Fridays. Um, not next week, but the next ones. After that, we've got two more for you. And maybe on the last one, we'll do something fun. But as of now, come and join us every Friday at 10 a.m. As you know, we do also have shows every other day. So make sure you guys are tuning in for those. Um, and I really hope to see you guys all at SoFest. I'm really excited. You'll see us behind the scenes. And I'm just, it's going to be a great week next week. And I'm so pumped. So with that, 
I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome weekend and stay cool, stay safe wherever you are. I know there's a lot of craziness going on in California right now with the fires and there's a rainstorm coming after a week of heat. So if you guys are in California or anywhere else and the weather's being a little wild, stay safe and stay cool. And we will see you guys on Monday. And it won't be so steady, so it'll be so fast. So we will see you bright and early at 8 a.m. every single day next week. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Get some rest, get some, get pumped up for so fast next week. And we will see you all there. Bye, guys.